Yesterday I made a video on the brand new Mercedes EQXS. This is not a production car, this is just a concept or a prototype, but it could be a production car because it meets all the safety and road regulations out there for a production car, but the goal here for Mercedes was to improve the aerodynamics and the efficiency and implement what they learned during the development of this car into their coming production EVs. So what I talked about yesterday was the design of this car, and if you want to go and check that out, you can go and do so on my second channel called Bembley. But Today, I think this is so close to being a perfect example of what a sporty EV could look like. There's just some tiny tweaks in the front end that I want to do. And this is a, a typical problem for EVs today. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. The front end proportions of these EVs. They all have this punched in the face kind of look to them. I, I don't feel like the front end, the curvatures in the front end, uh, kind of work well with the rest of the body. We're going to have some fun and uh, we'll try to adjust that and see what comes out. Of that but before we do that let's just quickly go over some of the spec and tech here i talk more about this in my in my video from yesterday but cover the basics here so this design was not intended to be a hypercar performance uh, sedan the, the 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 priority here was to get it to go as far as possible in one single charge and they did that by reducing the drag coefficient to 0.17 which is unheard of in the production car industry the current record ho holder is mercedes eqs with a, a drag coefficient of 0.20 so I'm sure a lot of this technology here is going to be implemented in in their production EVs moving forward specifically the, the stretched out tail end which I absolutely love and it looks fantastic on this car here so the range of this is 640 miles or a thousand kilometers that was the goal and that was achieved with this prototype right here they did it with a new battery technology smaller battery with a larger capacity but the engine here is not super powerful it looks like a hypercar it kind of looks like a McLaren Speedtail here, but the, the power is, uh, the, the, the uh, electric motor just puts out 201 horsepower, so it's not really a quick car, but as I said, that was not part of the brief when they uh, engineered and designed this car. So let's have a look at the front view here and what we're actually going to change. So what I'm going to show you is the front view, what I'm going to change, then talk quickly about the rear view, and then show you the side view of a couple of EVs that have the same kind of proportional problems in the front end that I'm going to try and solve with the redesign here so it's not going to be a very substantial redesign but it's going to be a fun one i can't wait to see how, how it's going to turn out so here it is i think this overall design here i think it's a it gives me hope for what future evs could look like i think it's a fantastic stunning looking design this eq x it, it looks almost like a mid-engine car than an ev the only thing that gives it away is an ev is this front part right here so what i'm talking about is when you're looking at the overall curvatures of this car you have beautiful line flow going all the way here and swooping line very stretched out curvatures going all the way up to this point I would say right here where it dips super fast it dips too strongly down and this is what I want to stretch out so what I want to do here in the in the redesign is to take these lines that I just put out and what I want to do is just move them tiny bit this way so I want to stretch out the front end like this just a couple of inches just moving the, uh, the, the front end forward and stretching it out and that from my side view which I'm gonna show you in just a second will look a bit more harmonious harmonious with the overall design of the car. So I want this curvature in the front end to play better with the overall uh, shoulder line and the and the bottom uh, curvature uh, lines right here and the roof line as well. They all have kind of a, a consistency in their curvatures that's different from the front end curvatures, if that makes sense. It's gonna make a lot more sense when you see what I'm going to do and compare the original to the redesign when we're done with it. So let's have a look quickly at the rear here before I compare and show you the, prob the big problem with EVs that I have with e EV proportions portions today. This is, as I said in yesterday's video, I think this is the best view for the EQXX. It's a stunning design. This is a lot of speed tail, a lot of Volkswagen XL1 and also uh, Mercedes SLX, a little bit in the proportions from 1966. And I actually like these wheels as well. They don't look bad for EV wheels. It kind of looks like it has a big brake disc behind those uh, folks there. It's a great visual approach to how you can design just flat wheels. And I think, as I've said before, I think Mercedes Mercedes at the moment have some of the best wheel designs from factory of any uh, car manufacturer. And when you design a car to go smoothly through the air, it kind of, it, it feels like nature is actually designing the car because there are a lot of na natural laws that you have to kind of abide by to have a shape that uh, goes through the air in the most efficient way. And this 
is what comes out when you see the speed tail for example they all have the same kind of similar shape Volkswagen XL1 as well so it feels almost like nature is a big part of this design right here also like this uh, Porsche Taycan opening right here so let's have a look at what I'm talking about when we talk about the side view and the issues that I have with the front proportions of EVs today and then we're gonna jump into the redesign and try to tweak the front end of this make it a proper looking proportionally uh, EV supercar from Mercedes that's what I want to see. I want to see an AMG version of this eventually. So here we have the Tesla Model Y. What I want to want you to focus on is the start of the A pillar right here and that distance to the front axle. So this distance is what I want you to focus on in these comparisons here and also the front overhang right here and how short that is. The main mass of the vehicle, the volume of the vehicle is this part right here. And then we have a small tiny little hood right here in the front that dips super fast and that just ends kind of abruptly there and it feels like this box here is too small for the rest of the volume of the car proportionally you can instantly tell that this is an EV just by looking at these proportions and the front end of the of the Tesla here and the same goes for other EVs as well which I'm gonna show you right now so we have for example the Kia EV6 same kind of problem like the Tesla Model Y I, I don't know if it's a problem for you but for me proportionally it, it feels like the front end always needs to be stressed stretched out a little further in all of these EVs and it feels like as I said it's been like crashed or punched in the front end so it has this uh, punched in feeling in the front end that's the best way I can describe it so we have these long lines here beautiful stretch lines and then it just dips super fast in the front end same here with the Kia EV6 beautiful lines here then dips super strongly down here it, it, it too abruptly it doesn't have a nice flow with the rest of the lines in the car and we have this beautiful center line here at the Kia EV6 as well. I kind of like the rear end of this EV6. It looks cool, very unique, and a clear brand identity there for Kia. And then I want to put in the uh, eye pace here, the Jaguar eye pace, which has a kind of a weird proportion in the rear end, but it still has the same kind of uh, small box in the front end right here. Not really when it comes to the curvature, but in this case, we have more of a problem with the proportions, and the front end just looks too small. And you can see the A pillar starts almost like a mid engine car here on the EV6 and the I-Pace, which is fine, but I wish they just stretched out the front end on these EVs more. And the same goes right here for the Mercedes EQXX. This is a great view to show you what I'm talking about. You have these beautifully stretched out lines right here, the shoulder line going all the way into the front end. And as soon as we reach at this point, right above the front axle, you can see that it all of a sudden takes a dive right in, crashes into the ground like that. It doesn't have a uh, elegant front front flow or, or graceful line flow in this area right here. All that this car needs to be a almost a 10 out of 10 design here. On top of that, if we look at the greenhouse here, this is almost, as I said, like a mid-engine design because we have the greenhouse actually starting way further back than the A-pillar on the rest of the EVs, as you can see right here. The A-pillar here actually starts further back, so we have the ability to play around here with the front end and make it into a, a in my opinion, a perfect EV design in this case as I said if they made an AMG version out of this I would be super excited that would be super cool to see but let's see what we can do quickly here in the side view before we jump into the real redesign in the perspective view so quickly just stretch out the front end this part is what I want to work on this right here so just stretch it out and then we're gonna do this in uh, in perspective as well just a little bit like this it doesn't need more than a couple of inches and you can see what what I want to uh, achieve here is this level line being more harmonious this dip being more harmonious with these rest of the lines in the body and this to me looks like a perfect proportionally design now comparing this to the original right here which looks as I said like it's been punched in the face and then we have this uh, version that I just stretch out the front end so now continue here in Photoshop and uh, do this in perspective view and let's see how this is going to turn out when I first saw the EQ double uh, X in uh, they, they had this teaser image in a side view and you can see that the rear kind of dipped a little bit too fast as well so I thought it was gonna be just another EV design with 
with the same kind of issues that I've had with the previous EVs, the EV6, the a little bit of the Tesla Model Y, and then we have a bunch of other EVs where you have these sloping lines in the front end, but this Mercedes EQWX seemed to have that same problem in the rear end. But then when they unveiled it yesterday, I was pleasantly surprised when I saw the overall beautiful sculptured shape of this thing. The rear end looks absolutely fantastic, and I love that they have this diffuser that pops out in 60 kilometers an hour uh, to extend the rear diffuser. It's a cool little feature. Rear end is super clean, front end is clean as well, but I think we can make it look just better a little bit in the graphics I'm not gonna work so much on the graphics here in the redesign more so on the proportions and this is gonna be one of these redesigns where I think just moving the body panels a few inches back and forth is going to have a massive impact on the end result and I'm gonna show you of course that in the in the end of this video so I think it's cool that they made this uh, they made the entire concept here in just 18 months and I think it drove uh, I, I've heard the number 180,000 miles as a test in computers during that time, which is insane. And that's how they got the dry coefficient down to 0.17. That and of course putting this uh, prototype in wind tunnels to make sure that they actually had the right number for the dry coefficient. And the fact that it has a 640 mile range is just insane as an EV. I'm not sure of course if that's the real world number. We know that the real world numbers usually tend to be 20% uh, lower than the official numbers that they put out at launch, for example. And I think that's kind of probably the same thing here but it doesn't have a big engine it has 201 horsepower so what i would like to see i said this in the in yesterday's video as well this looks like a hypercar design so what i want to see mercedes do is make a version that is angled towards uh, the, the range keep the 201 horsepower 640 mile range here for this model and then you can have one model that has looks that, that plays a little bit into the aesthetics of the design but you're gonna lose a little bit of range and I'm totally fine with that for example we can have an AMG version of this that has some cool aero bits on it some carbon fiber pieces and what have you and then it has a range of maybe 450 miles which is still in, in, insanely good or 500 miles but it could have an engine of 700 a dual engine maybe 700 plus horse, horsepower so you have that EV acceleration and uh, and instant torque in this shape because I think this shape deserves to have a uh, more powerful engine than the 201 horsepower even though it's going to bring down the range I'm totally fine with that which just cool to have two like a, a white and a and a darker version of of the a more sinister version of, of the of this prototype right here which is the AMG version but overall I'm really excited about Mercedes and the EQX here they I think they made a fantastic job bringing this to life and it looks so so much better than the EQS. The EQS, zero Mercedes in that styling, in my opinion. A little bit in the front end where you have the graphics, you have the star there, of course, if you remove the star, it could be pretty much any brand you like. But this, when I looked at the EQX, EQX here, you can look at the roof line, you can look at the greenhouse, and I could instantly see that this is a Mercedes. So they haven't just gone full crazy EV blobness with this design, which I really appreciate. And as you can tell, you can still make beautiful sculptures like this, and you can still have a fantastic range and a beautiful looking EV. I think designers are kind of lost when it comes to the design of EVs. They all want to make it into a blob, which I understand for range purposes. It's probably a good idea if you want to have seven seats or whatever and a blob shape is the optimal way to go. But I want to see more EVs like this where you can actually feel the designer's pen. You can feel the pen, the, the, the sketches that the, how this design actually started out and not just uh, computers CAD models, how they just built up the, the polygons or, or the surfaces in a 3D software and that's how the car came to life. I want to see more cars like this where you have the, the feeling of, of sketch from the initial concept and how you can kind of have that vibe into the production model as well.